something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go and stay. It's Jay and Adam. It's Previewed. It's Previewed's Fix It with Adam and Jay. Peaches, oh, welcome to Fix It, where friends don't let friends fix pop culture alone. And yes, I almost said the other you intro, almost did. but I did. You did not, but I did. You did. You're a good, good boy. I'm a good, good podcast I'm boy. I'm Adam. Uh, welcome to our podcast, Fix It. Uh, I'm Jay. That's Adam. You may know us. Oh wait, no, wait. You forgot to say your name, but you did it again. Uh, see, anyways. now we gotta see uh, you. You. Uh, we're doing it live, Jay. We're, we're doing do- it live. <laughs> Hey there, listen, oh, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> got you off your, off okay. your game. And you're our listener. Hey there, listeners. Ho oh, there, listeners. Bustin' makes me feel, eh, that, listeners. Yeah, that's, that's right, listeners. That's right. They're, they're, uh, every, every building in Vlisteria is low-key haunted, and uh, we're busting so much that it no longer makes us feel good. Okay. It's just honestly, it's just a day to day. That was just a job, of, dude. Do you know how you know how heavy those proton packs are? They they've got to be they got to be decently <laughs> heavy, and they get hot. It's you know it's, it's a nuclear you get that, reactor on your back. You get man. that back sweat going. So I we hear your plea, Listeria, but unfortunately, the ghost we have not found the ghost uh, the ghost hole yet. And once we do, we'll fill that ghost hole. Yep, that's a sentence I said today. Welcome to Fix It. Uh, I'm Jay. That's Adam. You may know us from the wildly successful uh, reaction channel on <laughs> YouTube, Previewed. Uh, I said that in a weird way. Man, I'm just f- I'm firing on all cylinders. Ghost today. hole, baby! Ghost hole! Uh, this is our podcast, Fix It, where every week Adam and I take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark, maybe didn't quite get there, maybe just missed their proton shot, and... We fix it. And today we are going to be fixing 2016's remake. I think it was a solid attempt at a remake of the original. A remake of Ghostbusters. Uh, the Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy led Ghostbusters. Yep. I think this has been a highly requested uh, episode for us to do. This is one of the top five Yep, since a couple uh, years ago. Oh and, my god, uh, Ghostbusters. Also since uh Frozen Kingdom is coming out soon, we figured we could probably, you know, spend some time. We fixed Ghostbusters 2 last year. We sure did. Well, we, we sure had some did. really good fixes with that one. And the the funny thing is is that like that compared to this, the fact that we fixed that one first is still a very interesting choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we knew this movie was coming, so we, we were yeah, saving yeah. this for the next yeah, actual. You gotta yeah. keep, you gotta keep your hat. Gotta keep your pot of dry. Pot. Gotta keep your pot of dry. And, and I would, and I know you're at home saying, Jay, if this was a hot one, maybe you could have done the intro a little bit more professionally. But you know what? That's how we roll here in Vlisteria. Today, that's how we're rolling, guys. Yeah, yeah. Are you a Vlisterian? Get back to work. We got <laughs> ghosts to bust. The library got ghost holes to find. The library's full of them, okay? The library's absolutely full of them. Get back to work. All those dead librarians. Oh, boy. Maybe we should have fed them. <laughs> oh, man. Comptroller, man. That's, it's a comptroller's fault yeah. right there. That's, it's a dangerous job of being a librarian in Vlisteria. Any hoozles. Uh, before we get into fixing uh, Ghostbusters, we've come to everyone's absolute most favoritist of all of our segments. We took a poll. Uh, everyone voted <laughs> everyone voted and this is their most favorite segment uh before we, we get into our fixes adam and i we deepen our friendship and our fellowship uh because they mean the same thing uh and uh in a little segment that we like to call roll for convo our lovely producer brian who's the best producer in the biz but also is uh secretly on our list he could be a ghost uh, we don't know he has he could be a ghost he could be a ghost brian do you need busting we'll get you <laughs> we will bu- we- <laughs> it makes us feel good <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, uh, our lovely producer Brian has given us uh, 20 topics of conversation and I'm going to roll a 20 sided die to figure out what we're talking about today and the topic of conversation is a gentleman's three a gentleman's three what is one trivial hill that you're willing to die on trivial hill Ooh. 
That narrows down. But bit. here's the thing. I think if it's a hill that you're willing to die on, yeah. I don't think you view it like I don't think oh, it's that's, trivial to that's, you. That's fair. So that's why it's kind of hard to think about it mm-hmm. because like because I'm think like I something immediately popped into my head, but I was like, yeah, but that's not trivial. I'm like, yeah, but it is kind of trivial. Do you know what my you know you I, know what my my trivial um. There's a couple. There's a couple of trivial hills I will die. Okay. On. Um, first and foremost. The line, or a queue, whatever you call it, mm-hmm. it is a holy thing. It is a thing that must be respected. It is a thing that must be observed. If you are walking into a place and you see that there are people lined up, and you just are like, "Well, that line can't possibly for me," you, my friend, have earned a scorching hot ticket to hell. The oh. line, it, line cutters. People who ignore lines. Sure. Lineage is a very, very important thing. Mm -hmm. You must observe the cue. And honestly, also to that effect, if you have to if you have to wait in line for something, I'm of I am of the firm mindset that if you have to wait in line for something, and if you've chosen to wait in line for that thing, Mm -hmm. you need to shut up about how long the wait is. Oh. Okay. That's a, a like the line culture is very important sure it's it is how it is a it is like it is the first bastion of polite society it really is can we all wait here for something and yeah you must it must be respected at all costs Mm -hmm. look we like you know that you know you ever been waiting in line you had that person in front of you's like oh we've been waiting forever blah blah blah. it's like yeah we know trent we know it's been we're all here this is not any. You, you, we're gonna. You wanted to do this. Mm-hmm. You wanted to do this. The line. The, the the thing at the front of the line said how long the wait was probably gonna be, and you said I, I'm willing to accept that. So accept it. Okay. Look at up both cameras. Watch Look out at now. your camera too. Oh my God. I'm looking at all. Watch of out them. now. I'm looking at all of them. Observe and respect the line. It may seem like a trivial thing. And nothing makes me more mad when people are like, is this the line for the thing? Obviously. Obviously it's the line for the thing. I would rather stand in a line that I didn't need to be standing in than assume that the line didn't apply to me. Wow. Yeah. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. It's a big deal. My other trivial hill? Oh, okay, sure. Uh, the, the, first, the first expense of a wedding should be an open bar. Oh, the first expense. Wow. It's it you can just scrimp on literally everything else. It should be an just open have, bar. Okay, so yeah. And I'm not just, and I'm not trying to and everybody. I know and I know I might be stepping on some toes with this and I'm not trying to offend anyone, but like it's it should be the first it should be your first thing. And I know that makes me sound like an alcoholic. I actually don't even drink that much, you but like I no one either like, "Oh, it's cash." No one brings cash. No one brings cash. Who's got cash? Nobody. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What okay. about you? What are your trivial hills? This shouldn't be hard for you. I know. This well, shouldn't no, be hard I, for you. You're I'm the most trying... persnickety person that I know about certain things. No, I'm not persnickety. You're, you, uh... I mean, but like, what would you define it for trivial? What, you know, what would be trivial for me? Because like, I, I mean, like social faux pas, like, for example, people who talk too loud in a movie theater yeah like instant death i don't think that's yeah i'm not sure that that's trivial but i know where your head's at but like there but you're on the right track i think but there is you know there's the whispering to your friend during the oh i think it's good. that's fine it's the the people who just disrespect the theater going experience but also i will say i this. don't think that's trivial anymore i will say this it is like it is very much <laughs> like if you're going to make an off-color joke during community day jackbox it just better be funny you gotta be funny. Yeah. If you're gonna be the loud person in the audience, you better make the movie better. And that and and look, and I know that's I, a weird I, deal I know, for us. To I die know, on. I'm aware, but we don't do we. This show can go on the road, Jay. But the audience would know full well what show they are but going to is, get from us. It is a special thing when you get that one person who's like. Especially like at horror movies and stuff, and they're like yelling oh. out, and it's like, ah, oh, yeah, this is so much better because you're here. Thank you, bless you, bless you for it's, your it's, service. It's too, it's too rare though. <clears throat> it's risky though. It's, it's very risky. risky. 
but most it, most of the time it that never works and it it just ruins the theater going experience and mo- it seems like a lot of day, to nowadays everyone's just like I don't like going to the movies anymore people are getting ruder yeah yeah because they just keep talking or on their cell phone or bringing kids because to people are film. too used to just watching things in the comfort of their home mm-hmm. and that's wonderful like streaming is a great thing it is <clears throat> but, but it's but the the movie theater is the, yeah it's the a sacrosanct ho- there is a holy pl- it is a holy place mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. if you're gonna whisper to your friend. That's fine. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't bother. It doesn't bother me. me because especially if like sometimes you're going to a Marvel movie and it's yeah, just you're like, like oh, you're looking oh. for him being like, can you believe that mm-hmm. that's had just happened? You know, like that's the, that that is that is being social. Mm-hmm. Going to the movies is a social experiment. Being on your phone or like being loud, that's not social. Mm-hmm. That's not that that is not that is not enhancing the tribe in any way. I think. Do you have any like editing, like hills you'll die on? <sighs> <laughs> a lot yeah that's what i'm saying I like mean, yeah I, and i think that's where it gets uh, it gets tricky for you is because like you don't anything that you have a particular mindset on you're like this is not trivial this is <laughs> those j cuts that need to be precise trivial. this is not trivial yeah. fade the music out it's, you know just fade it out at the end at the cut what are you doing yeah yeah so i guess the answer is i have a lot I spread myself thin on many trivial hills. I think the answer is nothing is trivial to you. <laughs> I have strong opinions about everything. That's fair. Uh, I knew that. Yeah, as soon as it was like trivial hills, and I was like, yeah, okay, all right. Well, that's been roll for convo, everybody. That's been roll for convo. Don't cut, don't, don't you dare cut me in line. Don't you dare. Someone cut me in line when oh, we were waiting for a Southwest flight, and uh, Kimberly saw Mad Jay in a way that was not cute. I, I felt really bad, but also the guy was being a jerk. Never mind. Not not the time or the place. Not the time or place. Um, but uh, we should probably move into Ghostbusters, shouldn't we? We like, should move, move into Ghostbusters. Um, but before we move into Ghostbusters, we should probably uh, learn more about Ghostbusters. Yes. As it were. A, a little reminder what happened from eight years ago. Yeah, perhaps educate our audience as well when, with our producer, Brian. Brian, why don't you let us know about Ghostbusters 2016 when you roll that beautiful bean fun fact footage. Thank you, gentlemen. Producer Brian here. And today we're trying to fix 2016's Ghostbusters. Directed by the wonderful Paul Feig, it stars Kate McKinnon, Kristen Wiig, Leslie Jones, Melissa McCarthy, and Chris Hemsworth. Additionally, most of the Ghostbusters, the original ones, make appearances, but not as their original characters. It had a budget of $144 million and made $229.1 million at the box office. Here are some fun bean facts. In the end, it lost over $70 million after the theaters took their revenue cut. It received a ton of unwarranted backlash before it came out because it was female-led. And it was review-bombed online before its release. At the time of its trailer release, it became the most disliked trailer on YouTube and the ninth most disliked video on all of YouTube. I believe that has now since changed. Leslie Jones received the most backlash on social media. The end credits show the title as Ghostbusters, Answer the Call. This was added by the studio, which wanted to avoid the confusion of having two films called Ghostbusters. A sequel was canceled after its box office performance. And if you care, this movie has a solid 74% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 2.3 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Anyway, back to you gentlemen, and please enjoy writing your fix. All right, great job, Brian. That was a good. Je- there was a lot to cover there. There Was a lot to cover there. Th- this, this, um, there was. This was quite the story. This was. <sighs> yeah. Yep. You know what? Realize we didn't talk about who's going to do plot drop for this one. Well, the plot drop's really easy, Jay. Oh well, then. <laughs> well, well, then clearly you have already decided who's doing plot drop. I'll do it. Sure. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> for those of you who may not seen uh, Ghostbusters 2016, or blocked it out, or yeah, or just yeah, went into a fugue state during uh, after the first ten minutes of this film. Uh, Adam, why don't you tell everybody about what happens in Ghostbusters 2016 in everyone's absolute favorite segment? People, we took a poll. People voted. Everyone voted. They Everybody voted. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is their absolute favorite. Plot drop. Hey. Remember Ghostbusters? The first one back in 1984? Remember how awesome it was? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Uh, it's the same film, 
just done poorly and uh, without any what would we what did we, what did we saw it before reverence for it yeah they just remade it it's beat for beat basically the same movie yeah the only difference is that every beat of the movie takes longer to get to the jokes are not as funny yeah and the, there is actually a bad guy who's actually a human doing a thing throughout yeah. most of the movie but we don't really know why he's doing anything yeah he's just kind of like making he is making he has Anti Ghostbuster technology before yeah. the Ghostbusters exist uh-huh. to yeah. bring forth ghosts, and then he wants to open a portal to the I guess the spirit world because there are ley lines on New York that cross in Times Square, and then he'll bring forth Armageddon through yeah. a ghost hole, and then the Ghostbusters ghost stop him. Yeah, a ragtag group of scientists and their friends that they accumulate along the way have to stop a guy who is trying to uh, start a ghost apocalypse in New York. Yeah. And they do. And they do. And it goes great. Uh-huh. That's about it. That's about it. That's really about it. I mean, it. if you saw Ghostbusters, you've seen this movie. Yeah. Just think think of a think of that most movie you love. It's <clears> like, <throat> what would happen if someone made it but like really poorly? Yeah. Oh, that's well, what the movie is. I, <clears throat> hmm. The interesting thing is okay. So I've watched, I've done the watch along of this with the Discord. If you haven't joined the preview Discord, uh, by all means, uh, hop on in. The water's fine. Go to discord.gg slash preview. Join our, join our community. Uh, if you're looking for internet best friends, it's the best place to hang out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did the watch along on the Discord. Usually if we're doing a, or prepping a movie uh, for the podcast, I need to watch it. And so I'd like to watch it with you guys. So come hang out with me and watch along. Um, really, the consensus I walked away from with this movie was, I feel like this this to me the whole time and i'm gonna be i'm gonna be completely upfront i don't hate this movie i think this movie has some fun moments this movie does relish in certain aspects of the ghost busting that's fun like they had some new gadgets sure there was like some fun some fun action moments in a vacuum yeah in a complete and utter vacuum where there was yes. never a ghostbusters movie before this this movie is perfectly fine. Some of the CG is pretty fun. Sure. Absolutely. That opening sequence ghost looks really cool. She does look pretty cool. It's pretty evocative. Yeah. That being said, the problem is this movie feels like this movie feels like it was a remake of a movie that we all kind of thought was bad. And they were in it. It's almost kind of the joke that they are remaking the movie. Do you know I'm what I'm sorry. saying? There are certain what? Hollywood comedies, like when they like when they uh, did, uh, is similar to like the Starsky and H- they made a Starsky, Starsky and Hutch movie. Why right. can't I say Starsky? Um, well, that was a show from the seventies. I I understand, but part of the joke is that they're making a movie about this. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. Because it's like this is such an old franchise. Why would we possibly make a movie about this? Okay. It felt like, oh yeah, remember how Ghostbusters was like kind of stupid? I guess let's like remake it and try to make it better and Oh, that's the tone you that's what you felt? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. But that's not the case. I it didn't felt, Oh, wow. There were certain aspects of this movie that was like it it feels like it feels like it doesn't it feels like it respects but doesn't like the source material. Yes. And I think at this point it's a good opportunity to say, "Hey, 8 years ago and more like for the next couple of years, there was a lot of content put on YouTube bashing this film and everyone a part of it. Like yeah. it got real heated and, and it, got, it was gross. And it got hateful yeah. like immediately. That's not what we're trying to do here. In no way, Just shape, whatever, or form. I mean, this movie's been, well, in the past now, it's been eight years. No one's really talked about it in a while. Just want to remind everybody, we're not hating on this film. No. We're just critiquing it and, like, seeing what was presented in the movie. We're not trying to rehash any of that stuff. Yeah. There's, a, there's hours of that, 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 that vile. We're not trying to do that. Another dice. But you're right. It wasn't like this was a lovingly a loving remake of a movie everyone liked. This mo- there yeah. were some choices that was in this movie that made it seem like they did not like or respect the source material. Yeah. P- specifically the scene with Bill Murray. Yes. The Bill Murray scene, the whole the meta concept of it, uh if you haven't seen the movie, Bill Murray plays a completely different character. 
and yes. someone who doesn't believe in ghosts. All four of the ki- all well, I guess not Egon because he wasn't he, he had passed before this movie was made. But there's a, bu- sta- there's a bust a of him. Yeah, there's a ba- bust of him in the movie. But our our surviving actors are all in the movie, but they're all playing different characters, and yeah. it's awkward and weird when they show up. It feels every time that they're in the movie, it feels like there's a moment where they're like, "Yeah, he's in the movie, but he's not playing who you think it is." Because, because why would we do that? Why would we make more ghosts? Why would we make more Ghostbusters in the actual universe? Because no one liked those, remember? And I'm like, I think we liked them quite a bit. It yeah, it feels like a yeah, because you don't like Ghostbusters, so but isn't it funny that we have these cameos of the original cast? It yeah, it it's a weird tone. It's a very weird tone. It doesn't. I didn't get it, like I, because I was watching it with my dad. Yeah, we're just watching it. We watched it at normal speed. Normally, I would have watched it like two times speed. We're watching normal speed, and we're both kind of like, I, huh. I, I can. I would really love to have been a fly on the wall when you've been like, when you you were thinking about me. Like, Dad, I usually watch these like at two times speed. Like, how do you feel about that? <laughs> no, <laughs> he said no. You actually asked? No, no, no. Oh, okay. said, but he would have said no. <laughs> But when we get to that scene with Bill Murray, which is like an app, like they don't, they don't bust a ghost until I think it's like forty-five minutes. I mean, that's the movie's two hours long, which is about twenty-five minutes longer than the original film. Yeah, like this movie takes a while to get uh-huh. anything moving. But that Bill Murray scene, like uh, a little over halfway, like he shows up to like see the first ghost, like ghost they caught because he doesn't believe them. The ghost pops out of the, the containment unit. Picks him up, throws him out of a window, kills him. Yeah. And then look out the window and goes, ah, that guy wasn't Ghostbuster material anyways. Scene ends, and we're moving on. And both my dad and I are like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. That's, why would, how, uh, it's it's the line. Killing Bill Murray, oh, okay, I, this movie's being, but the, it, why would you write that line? Uh, for me, it just, it, that's, because that's a choice. It's it just interesting. And it's like it's like we were talking about in the second Ghostbusters. It's like, look, at the end of the day, like they're just still doing stuff in the Ghostbusters universe. So, like, as much as I got frustrated with Ghostbusters two, I can't be that mad about it because I get to hang out with all my friends and do all the things. Yeah, like we're busting ghosts, and I feel like that's <laughs> it, it. Just this movie assumes that like maybe we all didn't like Ghostbusters, but we all really, really love Ghostbusters. Yeah, the reason <laughs> why this movie is being made is, is because, because we, we all love, love Ghostbusters. <laughs> yes, like this movie. W- I mean, this movie would not be made if it wasn't for those first two films. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, I think a, a, a lot of the criticism oh. came down to the casting and whatnot, and that gets icky immediately. Oh yeah, they did a great job. I like this cast. Yeah, they were great. I like like I, M- Melissa McCarthy literally can do no wrong in my opinion. She's got she can do no wrong. I think she's an incredible like she's funny. She can do serious. She can do whatever. Mm-hmm. And I just like I just like it when she talks. Sure. And like and uh <laughs> uh. I almost called her Leslie Nope. Leslie Jones is so funny. I she was everywhere for a hot second, and now mm-hmm. she's not. And I don't know why. I never stopped I liking. Don't, her. I don't know. And Kate McKinnon is more, maybe the most interesting character in this whole thing. And Kristen Wiig does her job. Yep. Like she like she's the she's the straight, straight man person. In this. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. you know, um, I just I I think the cast is great, and I think if this movie had happened. And they just set it in a world in which Ghostbusters are were already a thing. I think you have a you have a much better movie here. And uh, I'm not trying to get into the fixing yet, but like that's that's the biggest people are like, oh well, blah, the whoa, it's woke and yeah. I'm like, no. I was like, the problem is, is that they tried to reboot Ghostbusters when we just needed a sequel. Yeah, we just needed more. We didn't need a new version of it. No. We just needed more Ghostbusters. Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's it was just, it was a weird thing where it's like, who was this movie for? Who was this movie for? If you're making a new Ghostbusters film, I would think they're like, oh, you want all the fans of Ghostbusters to come see this film. But then this, the content of this film is like, hey, did you like that original movie? No. But it's, but also. No, you shouldn't have, though. But th- on that tone. If if this movie is for like a new audience, I don't think this movie had enough touch like had enough 
groundedness or touch like touchstones to it. It didn't for a new audience to really dig their feet in. Like it just it all felt like this movie kind of never like from a like from a tone and a script perspective, this movie never really puts both feet on the ground. It doesn't. It never stands still. No. And when it does, it, there are a couple moments that it does, but it feels it, it feels like it, it takes too long almost. It, the movie you know is longer than the original Ghostbusters. Like, like some of the serious moments I'm like, okay. Yeah. I get what you're going for here, but like now now that we're we t- uh, okay it's it's uh, tonally very it's weird because in the original one there's the whole scene again the mm-hmm. guys get fired from the college they take out a third mortgage on ray's home they talk about it ray's very nervous yeah we realize going into it how much money they have it's not much mm-hmm. they have a limited window of opportunity to make this small business work that does not happen in this film. That was film. a good joke in this movie when she, when they're looking at the at the firehouse and she's like, "Oh, it's twenty one thousand dollars a month." And Kristen was like, "Go to hell." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, "That's funny." Yeah, it's a good. Th- bit. There are some. Yeah, there's some really good bits, but tonally, <clears throat> it's it's vastly more. Yuck, 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 yuck. Oh, the good that the slime went in every crack I have, and I'm a woman because that's I have. It's like what? We, no, 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 no. That's too far. You don't need to do that. You don't need that. It doesn't. Yeah. You, these these women are so talented and funny. We don't need to go blue with this at all. Yeah. This is it's absurd already as it stands. But they just. It was just so weird. Yeah. It was just so weird. And the funny thing is, from a fixed perspective, <clears throat> I think you can. I think you can fix. This is actually a pretty economical fix, in my opinion. Oh, yes, I, th- I agree with I you. I think you can change the given circumstance, the world building. Yep. And I think you can change, uh, you can tweak, uh, which well, honestly, even g- the given circumstances of that, of the world could just, f- you, you tweak the bad guy a little bit and just give him a little bit more of a backstory. Oh, yeah. yeah and, you have a, and you have a better movie. Yeah. You can keep, I think you can even keep the same cast. Oh, I yeah. No, my fix, well, yeah. I mean, our fix, we're going to keep the cast. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason to. There's no reason to change the cast. We can keep this the same cast. Keep- I would just make Chris Hemsworth. I don't know why did he have to be the dumbest person. It's. I don't understand why he needed to be the dumbest person. It. It was the bits it, weren't that the funny. first ten minutes of it were funny. Was it? But it. What. Kevin, why don't you have any frames in your glasses? Oh, they kept getting in the way. They kept getting foggy. Was, honestly, that's not where I lose it. I, was like, that's not I how, lose it that's with not... the, uh, the the Mike Mike hat uh, joke for uh, you know you have a, I'm allergic to cats. Well, he's a dog. That's okay. Now we're doing Laurel and Hardy, and that and that ain't it. <clears throat> like, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't understand why Janine was not a punchline. No. She worked hard. She was a force of nature. She, yeah, <laughs> like they were lucky she was on their side. Yes. they needed her. She did. She was not. She was not into it. Now, I, I think there's. I, I have a very specific fix on how to keep the same vibe of that character. Oh, okay. Just make it a little bit. Just make it a little bit uh, more. A little bit more interesting. It's a little more difficult to write, but it's a little more interesting. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just like. Well, here, let me ask you this. Yeah. What do you think about the the third act? It kind of just comes out of nowhere. It does kind of come out of nowhere, and I would argue it's too action packed. It's too action packed. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I would argue that Ghostbusters uh, really relishes in the the original relishes in the downtime a little too much. Sure, I would I, like. I, I, I would. like that there's more bows. I, I like that Kate McKinnon has different kinds of proton packs. <laughs> That kind of stuff, I'm like, yeah, man, that's cool. She's got the little pistol versions. Sure. That rules. Yes, I I agree with you. The, having new, new tech is great. Like, the new movie it has some new tech. It's like, oh, that, yeah, on a drone? That's brilliant. For me, it's that there was no theme with this bad guy. It was kind of just like... It All was of a sudden, a big top of... circus and an action uh, an action sequence started. They the were like blue, John the... Wicking and, yeah. whipping and whipping ghosts around with it. Like, it just felt like... Wait, what are the rules? What are the rules? What are, what's going on? Yeah. Are they just pushing them back into a fog? What's wait? Everything I know about Ghostbusters doesn't line up with what the scene is right now, and it's cool these different gadgets and stuff, but like, what is happening? Yeah. 
Why is this an action scene? Because like we could have busted these. I don't know. It just it just felt totally no, like awkward and like we're throwing people around with. I, I'm fine just, with that. But I I I, I understand your point. It's just like ah, this doesn't feel like Ghostbusters anymore. It feels like a, a silly action movie. Yeah. Uh, but I think if you, if they'd earned that kind of sequence, I'd be kind of okay with well, it. Well, if they earned it, yeah, yeah, sure, probably. But they didn't earn it at all. Yeah. But I think there's. I think we're both like I both I think we're both like really itching to fix this. Sure. In a way, I th- in a way that I think maybe we should just get to it. Okay, let's <laughs> let's get to the fixing. Because I think like the moral of the story of what we're talking about right now is just like this is not a whole like this is not a wholly bad movie if you fix the tone. Yes. Like, that's really the moral of the story. It's like, I, I I walked away from watching this movie being like, there is a good movie in here. There is. There is a fun, there's a fun hang within this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, if you kind of like, and also we kind of, this movie, did this movie feel like really Technicolor to you? You mean the like the the contrast is like being a little high and like everything. Whereas very like colorful. Ghostbusters always felt a little street level to me, a little bit more muted in its tones. Whereas this one was like it was the color scheme is well, like it's the ghosts. Yes, they're too colorful. But too they're too clean. Yeah, and all the ghosts I just learned, recently learned this. The ghosts from Go- the original two Ghostbusters all practical. Yes, they were shot on like a black screen and then like double exposed to have a little bit of. Yeah, yeah. These are all CG. It's and you much t- scarier when it's like the yes. Yeah, yeah, it actually because it, these looked too clean. I remember when the trailer dropped right before we started this channel. We watched, we oh, watched it for the right. podcast, that's and we're right. all like, "The ghosts don't look right." Like that was like a consensus across the board. Wait, the ghosts are wrong. They're too yeah, clean. They're too that's clean. not. They look now. Here's the thing. Again, in a vacuum, those were really good ghosts. Yeah, those were really good. I would argue. I, well, I, I said we were just gonna move with fixes, but I guess we still have more to talk about. Uh, I will say this. I think maybe that's also the issue with the joke structure in this movie. A lot of a lot of the funniness of Ghostbusters mm-hmm. is circumstantial, mm-hmm. and it's kind of them just quipping back and it's the, a lot of their jokes are them quipping back and forth to each other, and it's more relationship jokes, mm-hmm. and it's more like honestly the senses of humor were more like r- kind of real life. Yeah, well, it I wasn't. Mean, they were small business people trying to figure out a thing. We had pro, you know, it, with it nuclear reactors on their it back. It wasn't set up punch, whereas this movie was wildly set up punch, mm-hmm. and it almost felt sketchy. Like and then, yeah, in the like sketchy, sketch and then comedy way. Yeah. It was like cool. Well, they just wrote it like this is like they wrote this movie like a sketch show, and that's fine. That can work for comedies sometimes. Um, the the clearest example of that. Uh, did you ever see the new guys with Will Ferrell and and um, that's that's Mark Wahlberg. One. Yeah, the police one. Yeah, it's a hilarious yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. But it's all sketches. If you watch it like that and realize oh. it's all just it's all just sketches. Oh, I didn't. I'm like, oh, this scene, this scene, here's the joke, like, here's the joke, and we're going to, like, structure it like a sketch, mm-hmm. and then we're going to move on to the next scene. We'll pr- we'll progress the plot, but it's it's kind of, it's it's an interesting watch for that very reason. But, like, Ghostbusters is not, it, they're funny, be, they're, they, within the fiction of the, uh, of the movie, are funny, they are diegetically funny. Yes. They're funny guys. Whereas this was, this is real people trying to, like... Whereas Ghostbusters 2016 was like characters in the moment who are doing jokes because the sc- the screenplay says we're doing jokes right now, mm-hmm. which I know that sounds really nitty gritty and really specific. But it, that I mean, it was the the humor is vastly different in these franchises. Yes, I mean, could, and you'll even see that with Afterlife. There's a reason why Afterlife was made because this movie did not do well. But when Afterlife comes around and people are like, oh. That was so like it, 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 they just basically did the first movie over again. I was like, yes, they did. They did do the the Zool plot line over again, but they like, brought back a bad guy. But like, it's wildly different. It is wildly different, but the, a lot of the same beats were there from the first movie, but in a different way. They, you know, same song, different tune. I didn't feel that way at all, and I and I'm the first to say that. Okay. Like when but, I see movies, but that the feel tone the of the humor totally different it was the similar it's to the first two movie. It's conversation. It's it's it character was, based. It, it was character based. Yep. Yeah. I would much rather see a movie where the characters themselves are funny, not mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Huh. That was a big that was a big reason for it. Yeah. Too bright and too boisterous with the comedy. When the okay. comedy's a little bit yeah. More subtle. Yeah. No, I get yeah, no, I get it. Huh. 
You know, it's funny. I, I just like realize a lot of my own thought processes is like in the process of talking about it on the show. Yeah. Like we have to stop ourselves uh, from talking about things because we have we'll, we we will have a tendency to start this podcast as we're setting up the tech for it, mm-hmm. and I'm like, we gotta we gotta stop. Not. Save I was it. Like uh, you we're gonna your, tr- you shut your mouth. We'll try to recreate this in the moment, and it won't come out the same way. It won't come out as good. But let's fix this thing. Let's fix this thing. What yeah. are you looking for in a fix, my friend? All I need in a fix is we change the tone. I think, and that is, I think, from a director standpoint, Paul Feig was the wrong person to direct this movie. I like, and I like Paul Feig. He, ha- I'm not, not, he is capable of making good, fun movies. But this isn't it. That's not. We, he didn't need. He's we, not a Ghostbuster. He's not a Ghostbusters director. Yeah. Um, tone, change the tone, and just this is a sequel to to Ghostbusters Two. Yes. Make it a sequel. Put it in. Just put it in the world. Just put it in ha- the world. Doesn't even have to be a sequel. Like it doesn't. Just, like well, I guess it would technically be if it's already yeah, in the world. But yeah. Like we just make it a sequel that takes place twenty five years. Uh, uh, yeah, twenty five. Yeah, boop, 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 yeah, twenty five years, twenty six years after the events of Ghostbusters two. Yeah, that's all. Like that's literally it. That's it. That's a hundred percent my own thought as well. And I'm like, I just okay. And here, so and I think so. Where's our so where so where is this? If we're if we are if the concept of what this fix is mostly a world building fix, mm-hmm. we're coming into well, the, it's a world building fix, but also it's a motivation fix too. Oh, of course, of course. I I sorry, I kind of lumped that together. Oh, oh, okay. So where, if we're starting twenty six later, twenty six years later, mm-hmm. where is where are our original four Ghostbusters right now? Well, I think they're they have moved on. They're out and about. They're doing their okay. own. They're doing their own things. But I don't think we even really touch base with them until mu- like later in Act Two. Okay. Real. I think, and I think that what well, the first step is okay. So this is tone has changed more closely to what Afterlife and the Frozen Empire is going to be in the original two films, right? Yeah. It, the ghosts are clearly more pra- shot practically, or at least C- the CG is done to look practical. Yeah. Uh. Tone change, comes back to normal, or back to the normal, and the, the, the colors are all also muted. It's not quite as colorful. Sure. Yeah, it's just muted yeah. just a little bit. Not not completely desaturated, but, you know, maybe 10% desaturated just a little bit. Of course. Um, I think the first question is, who's who here? Who's who? Who is, who's related to who? Because I think a couple... I don't think they all need to be related. I was going to say, I think only a couple of them need to be related, and I wanna, the other ones shouldn't be. I think... I think I, I mean I have very specific thoughts on this, and I we we talked about this before, but I think that Kristen Wiig plays plays uh, Ray's daughter. Kristen Wiig? Yes. Oh, okay. And I think we can keep the storyline kind of the same in that she got swept up in the whole ghost thing, being Ray's kid, mm-hmm. and of and is trying to go from from a academic perspective, trying to go straight. Oh, okay. Like, I think she's trying to be in the acad- like she's trying to get her foot in the door academic wise, but she also kind of has to hide that Ray is her dad oh. because like they are they all know him and know he's kind of a kook. Sure. Um, even though the Ghostbusters thing panned out, it doesn't mean his it doesn't mean his reputation is immediately better. That's what I was thinking. And I think we can have a similar perspective of her trying to get. I think she worked on this book. I think this is a perfect, like, this is actually a good device mm-hmm. to get them back together. Um, She worked on this book with uh, Melissa McCarthy, and it's suddenly back, you know, online, and mm-hmm. she's got to get rid of it. I think Melissa McCarthy is, like, they met working for her, for Ray, mm-hmm. and Melissa McCarthy is still working for Ray. Okay. And so she's like, I've got to go get her to take this book down, but I also know I'm going to have to go talk to my dad. Or that could very well be a thing. It's like she goes sees her dad and is talking to him about it, and he realizes that she's still working for him, even though Kristen Wiig like, made him promise that she like sh- she wasn't invited here anymore kind of thing. But like they're, they've been hiding that from her. So... There is a little bit of a like, there is a little bit of tension between the two of them mm-hmm. in that uh Melissa McCarthy like and Ray are maybe a little bit closer than uh mm-hmm. than Kristen Wiig is with her own dad. Sure. That's kind of that's where I want to like set that. Okay. The only thing that's important to me, Winston 
is mayor. Okay. Because I think that's fun. That is fun. Because I think I like the idea of him being mayor and him not necessarily being able to get on board with what what the Ghostbusters are up to, but like knowing they're right, but like having to play the political game. Having to play the political game. It's been twenty five years since anything yeah. happened in the or city. Or maybe he burnt he got burnt out by, you know, the whole Ghostbusters thing. Okay. But well, also Okay. If there's no if we're in Ghostbusters New York yeah. and we're kind of re re bumping up Ghostbusters, why are there no Ghostbusters? Well, because he didn't need any. Interesting. Because they busted all the ghosts. Yeah. Well, much like they did in Afterlife, like nothing really happened after Ghostbusters 2. Paranormal activity went decreased exponentially. They just they were they were a small business. And the, the they And the well went dry. The well went dry. Interesting. Okay. So Winston could have gotten burnt out, but I think also, you know, going re- I think he just he liked being able to help the public. And he just found out different ways of you know and con- maybe he, continuing he that work. He became the star like he became kind of the breakout star because he's so handsome. And he was like he was the working man. Yeah. He, he, everyone and the other three were, you know, for, you know, it works at a college. He was just a He's just Average a working blue, stiff yeah, who saved a, New York. Mm-hmm. Blue Collar Joe. Just yeah, out there, honestly, you're even saying that. I'm like, I'd vote for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he saved. He helped save New York twice. Yeah. In the past. And he's, he's just been putting his time in you know, helping in the local government. And he's worked his way up. Yeah, and I just think that's a fun dichotomy when they, like, and also from a movie making perspective, that going to the mayor's office is kind mm-hmm. of a loaded thing in the Ghostbusters world. Mm-hmm. And them going there and showing up and it's Winston. And surprise, it's Winston. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's just good. That's fun on a bun. Mm-hmm. And this time the, the mayor would actually be like, yeah, I get it. I know exactly what's going on. I'm going to help as much. But you yeah. know, and you, I, I can actually help this time. Yeah. Yeah. That's Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Well, you were saying something a while earlier and I got really into the whole Winston thing. I think one of the main things of this movie needs to be, and I think if you want to keep it where Kristen Wiig is uh, Ray's daughter and Melissa McCarthy is her friend and closer to Ray because she believes, I think part of this needs to be that Melissa is trying to um, validate the Ghostbusters. Oh. Because there's a whole, that's why Kristen Wiig is trying to get away from it. She believed the entire time. And then she got to a point of like, no one believes this anymore. I want a career in science like yeah and i have to make a choice and i'm because it's my entire life there have been no ghosts i know that they things happen i've been i've sh- i've been i've seen the things i've seen the footage but like they don't exist here i need to i'm going to look out for myself and that i don't love my dad and believe yeah. what he and his friends did but like i have to disavow that stuff in order to have my own career yeah and Melissa McCarthy is like, we have to validate what the guys did. You understand. Like, they saved, you know, all this. They saved the city multiple times. Like, all the, the reason we're all still here and that we're not in some type of ghost apocalypse is because of them. Yeah. Like, it's very important that we, like, let, the, you know, this new generation, these silly millennials, hey, the Ghostbusters were awesome. They were heroes in the 80s. You have yeah. no idea what they did. And I think... That the same, you know, we can have the book because that that she wrote it when she, they were kids and like trying to, you know, help her their her dad and her friends. Now she's trying to disavow the book, but like things are popping up again. And maybe we could have some similar nods to things that happened in the first movie. But like I think we go like we try to do something that's different because I think the bad guy could still be the same, but we need so I think we need way more backstory and him to be a little bit more complicated and not just like some crazy sure. basement dwelling guy. And I think they're I think. With the bad guy situation and its motivation for Kristen's wig, wigs character as well, it's they they realize that there is a way and because he would also like Ghostbuster tech would be out there and I yes. imagine that there was you could watch a YouTube video on how to build some of this stuff in your backyard. Uh huh. I think he has figured out a way to use ley lines to uh to uh break everything out of that of containment that's at Ghostbusters. Because the containment unit would still exist somewhere. The containment unit would still be there. That's and that's why Kristen Wiig is like Kristen because Ray is like if if they figure out about this containment unit, this gets out like we're I'm ruined. Like they can't like this is protecting New York. The city, yeah, kept so making sure like, the I'll, power's still she's on like, for the containment unit. I will unit. ghost bust. I will help. Just so, just but then as soon as this is taken care of, I'm out. 
and you guys got to like leave me alone and let me do what I need to do. Sure. So she's a reluctant Ghostbuster kind yeah. of vibe. Uh, so I think that, let's talk about the bad guy right now. Yeah. I think the bad guy needs to be like his parents were hurt or ruined or something about with one of the things that happened in the original movies. Yeah. And he, I was think neg- he was negative. His life was for the worse because the Ghostbusters succeeded in one or two. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like, there's a reason why he would not like, what happened back in the day and why he would want his revenge on the city. And the best way he can do that is by trying to release ghosts. Because we need like, we need I mean, actual, we, like, how, I mean, how emotional do we want to make this? I mean, I mean, this could, his parents be dead. He's trying to get his parents. It could very, it could very well be like he grew up in a home. Um, like he, he lost his mom like pretty early on mm-hmm. and he grew up in like kind of a bad situation with his dad. Sure. And like the ghost of his mom was the, like the one thing that was taking care of him. And they, and, like, the mom. And they came in and like busted the ghost. And they're like, I and think he's that's like, not I think all that's, ghosts, not I all think ghosts that's are great. Bad. Not all ghosts are bad. That I think that is amazing. I think it's amazing. Like it's a little ham fisted, a little, but, but not that much. Well, I mean, as we're gonna see in Frozen Empire, like the Ghostbusters Institute or whatever, like Slimer's around. Like they were realizing that like not all ghosts, all, not all specters are bad. Yeah. Like there is that nuance that there. It seemed at least the trailers seemed like they were gonna have some nuance too. They're like, oh, we're not right. I don't have to bust all the ghosts. Yeah. Some of them are helpful. Yeah. Some of them are fun. This is a weird world we're living Slimer's in. Slimer's hilarious, and he makes really good high C. <laughs> you does, know. Like, yeah. But I think. That is a great way of doing it. Yeah. They busted the mom, and he just wants to have, you know, he never got over, he never dealt with his grief. And so he's just, but also he knows that she's in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so he's just trying to get her out. He's trying to get her out. And he's figured out that, like, through ley lines and stuff. Mm-hmm. But what he doesn't know is that by doing what he's going to do and create a ghost hole to, you know, to to break enough the barrier to re- release everyone in the containment unit, it's actually going to let out somebody else. I also want to say this. I think Neil Casey gives a truly incredible performance as the bad guy in this movie. It is just a shame that it's kind of written very poorly because I was just like, dude, this movie, because I was like, I know, like, because I've seen him on stage at like UCB and stuff. Like he is very funny. Mm-hmm. Like and he's a ve- he's an excellent performer and a very good actor, and I'm sure he walked away from this process being like, man, people are gonna be like really noticing me after this, and 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 it's not and and it's not his fault. No, it's really frustrating. No. Also, no dancing. No dancing. That dance sequence or whatever is all right, was, John Lithgow. Come was, on, man. it was not. It wasn't here. funny. There's no dancing in Beaumont. It wasn't funny. Him con- like. Oh it, no, it was not. No, it was not. None, was of, none of that. Yeah, not. all the all the possession stuff. None no, of that. None of that's. None of that's good because it wasn't true to the ki- the character of this villain that we had set up. Nope. Like the joke should have been that like he was like he's trying to be charming and like a charming bad guy and it doesn't go and it's kind of falls flat. Yeah. Like that should have been the joke. I mean, like, are you trying to be a charismatic bad guy? Like you're not that. Like you need to just. Can you just get on with the apocalypse? Like, cause you're. This is. This sucks. Yeah. And I think you want to make this awesome. Like, you, do, <laughs> like do you want to make this awesome? Do you want to make this really good? Hit me with a hot note. Watch me bounce, baby. Let's go. So he succeeds. Act two. He actually, you know, the plan comes to fruition, and he's able to generate enough, um, you know, um, ghost activity, spectral activity. I guess that's a better way of saying it on the ley lines to crack the to crack the ley lines. Yeah. And to cause the containment unit to break. Okay. Um, and but then, so he gets what he wants, but un, unbeknownst, like something much worse is about to emerge from the ghost hole or whatever the hell mouth. Let's just say. And maybe. And we can. This is where we can add in lore, and this is where the other the other guys can come back, especially Ray, because like, uh, he knows everything about the occult. Yeah. So like, uh, this guy was, you know, there are terrible things down there that Egon and I had researched. Like, uh, we don't. You don't want one of these guys there's showing some stuff, up there's some stuff that we busted that we didn't really talk about because we didn't want to ever talk about it ever again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like there's some but but 
so almost I, push i almost want to push this moment a little bit earlier okay and maybe like there's like a good like 15 minutes of this movie where like more ghosts are kind of be- kind of become the status quo a little bit okay and maybe we and this is where we get the lesson of like not all ghosts are bad Ooh, okay do you know what i'm saying sure well because i think the, the the journey of our villain is that he succeeds and he talks to his mom and she you know they, they have the moment and it's really nice but like then the apocalypse happens in new york or is starting mm-hmm. and he realizes and the mom is like you i did i made a mistake in not going yeah. I shouldn't have stuck around, but I loved you, and I just yeah. We didn't have enough time. Yeah, and now I got to go. But you need to fix this because oh, interesting. This is I know I know my son, and that's not it. Yeah, and so you got to go help them, and so he has his own redemption small arc of oh, like that's good helping them. Yeah, I like that a lot. Helping them uh, fix the damage that he caused, and. Yeah. Maybe he sac- maybe he ultimately sacrifices himself at the end, or maybe he does in fact help them do a thing to fix the thing, to, you know, what have you, and he is able to come back in a future sequel as a you know as a redemption arc because like yeah. he knows a lot about this tech. Yes, there's a reason he did anti Ghostbuster technology. Yeah, you kind of want him on your team if you were you know realizes the error of his ways and to make sure whatever the heck's down yeah, there him and kate mckinnon fall in love there you go because they're the, the you know they're tech nerds mm-hmm. everyone's like you're not gay <laughs> like <laughs> like no yeah i'm an enigma <laughs> that's a line she would say like that's a like <laughs> like we all just kind of assumed it's like yeah that's well that's where you go wrong Never <laughs> Doesn't make it assume yeah yeah hmm but yeah, yeah it's, it's not bad it's not yeah this movie there are the, most of this movie just slightly massaged and adjusted it's all there yeah and then once you know ghosts come back and a new crop of ghostbusters you know dons the mantle to like ha- almost to save yeah. the city again like almost it's it we've set a it status rede- it redeems everybody they, we redeems. take like the ba- like the bad guy like the quote unquote like you know boss ghost that's a big problem mm-hmm. gets taken out at the end of this movie but then we set a status quo that like yeah but it's still everything that is the containment unit is at zero so everything else is still back out there. Mm-hmm. So like we're like you know that's even like that feels like the last line of the movie. It's just like, well we're gonna we're gonna need more Ghostbusters because there's a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. And as we all know, busting makes us feel good. <laughs> oh yeah, and Fallout Boy does not re-record the song. No, they do not. They no, no. They no. Do not. I forgot they did that. And when it's played in the movie, I was like, no, no. And I like Fallout Boy. But like no 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 we don't what's, need. What's the emotional arc for our two main characters, Chrissy Wig and and uh, Melissa McCarthy? Um, I think they need to see each other. But what is there to see? I guess is what my question is. Well, Kristen Wig has been trying to get away from this whole thing for this whole time because she went yeah. her own career, and then like realizing that she knew it was real but now like she's really like forced to like yes it was real but it's not like a, it's not a stain on her family legacy yeah her dad was right the entire time yeah so in a her helping this whole endeavor reconnects her with her dad yeah and then melissa because she's been wanting to defend the ghostbusters the entire time and now that with the ghostbusters you know with them picking up the mantle and helping and saving the city Ray is, you know, is the the original members are like back in you know favor with everybody. Yeah, Winston's like, he's mayor. He's mayor. You you help you kind of facilitate. Of course, he of course he's gonna spin it. Like yeah, of course I helped him. Yeah, because I, I I know it was like, and then, so he's like super popular now. I think there's a um, there's I, a cult on you know. It's I think all there's like stuff. a conversation to be had, um with Melissa McCarthy's character that like, she's trying to get the ghostbusters like back into, she wants the respect. They want them to be respected, not just like laughed at. Yeah. And, but I think there's, there's gotta be some emotional connection to that. Um, Okay. 
I know this was technically already done in the most recent one, but I think it makes sense. Okay. I think maybe it comes it comes out later that like may, I mean maybe Melissa McCarthy is just Egon's daughter. And it comes and it gets to a point where she's just like she's like my dad my dad passed while the Ghostbusters were still a joke. I can't leave them a joke. Ray and Egon weren't the closest. Yeah. So of course Ray would would help his yeah. his best friend's daughter. But I don't think we I I think I it's think like that's, I, I we, think we're we, tested. We, wait, we wait for that little drop. Yeah. I think it's like the kind of thing where it's like yeah, it's not we're not hiding it. No. But also it's like it's kind of just a little bit, you mm-hmm. know. And I think she's just like the Ghostbusters like can't be a joke and can't be over because if the Ghostbusters are over, then like then people are going to forget about my dad. Like, I think that's it. I think that's the big argument they have for the end of Act Two, and she's or maybe like, the mid mid Act Two when she when she's I, about to leave, and she's just like, "Oh, of course you're running away again because like you're embarrassed of like you know everything cool your about family, your life. family family legacy." Yeah, and she's just like, the "You don't even legacy. know anything." Like, yeah. I'm trying to like, I'm like really trying to make something of myself, and she was like, "You never like we we all, everyone here always always thought you were cool." Mm-hmm. You didn't have to run away from any of this. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, you're the coolest. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's real good. That's good. And I think we keep Les- I think Leslie Jones is just a subway operator. Like it's sure. Like I think that's just. I, they, she has I mean, some yeah. of the funniest bits in the movie, in my sure. opinion. Absolutely. And and Kate McKinnon is just a tech, a crazy tech nerd. Yeah. Yeah. Inspired by Aegon. See now I kind of want to. Now I really want to see this movie. Yes, because it'd be awesome. And Chris <laughs> Helmsworth. Oh, what's your fix for Chris Helmsworth? Oh, oh. Because I don't mind to be there. I, I just want to be think, so damn dumb. I think the 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 overarching joke of Chris Hemsworth should be: if you're going to make him that stupid, mm-hmm. I just need him to be the luckiest son of a bitch on the planet. Oh, okay. It, uh, like expounding upon, or just being like low key a savant when it comes to and pretty much anything. Like the moment when when she like grabs a sandwich and throws it back, and then someone just kind of throws him a sandwich again. I was like, that should be the joke the whole time. Quick question about that it, scene. That was ridiculous. W- was that ad libbed? I don't know. It felt like it was funny though. <laughs> it felt ad libbed. Oh, like someone just off camera caught it because clearly and then hooked him. And a then sandwich. he was like, and he like, right, threw it back to him, and they like, took that cut. They took that yeah. take. No, I I, I kind of liked that. Okay, <laughs> but like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's the kind of thing where like. He's really dumb, but he can make things happen because he's so goddamn charming. It's like the, it, almost like a Michael Scott foil, where it's just like, how does this guy get anything done? And then, no, he's actually the most productive salesperson in the office. Like the episode where um, he, a pretzel day, uh huh, where he's just like being waiting for pretzels all day and blah blah blah, and then it end, ends up making the biggest sale of the year, like while being wildly incompetent and be, sugar crash from the pretzel. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it should be that kind of vibe. That makes a little bit more sense than just just being. I don't wildly even know how stupid. phones work. Like I need, he's so stupid that I don't know why. It, it is not clear to me why he they keep him around. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it, it almost takes me out of the given circumstances, and I'm already barely in. Because mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't know. You're paying this guy. He doesn't even. He doesn't understand anything that's going on right now. But he's it's able so... to do the thing somehow. Yeah, or it's or you need to build him like an Andy Dwyer. Oh, okay. Like he's an idiot with a heart of gold. Sure. Like he's he's wildly incompetent, but like he wholeheartedly and very sweetly really believes in the Ghostbusters. I mean, if we're making all the like honestly, you make this Bill Murray's kid. Sure. Like if we're going to just it'd be like <laughs> like you got we've got to hire him. He's it's a van, it's he's a Venkman. He's he's part of the. Is it Oscar? Uh, sure. Could be Oscar. It could be Oscar. Could be Oscar. Sorry, he's he's as far as Ghostbusters go, he's royalty. He's he was he, almost possessed by a painting. He doesn't he really is? Did something happen? Yeah, and that's like did the joke. Something like, happened to him as a happen, kid. Something happened to him as a kid. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> but he that's really, great. but he well, really well. loves, but he really loves yeah, the Ghostbusters. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, but you know, and he was just by a painting you know, for, almost, you know, for a couple it, seconds because it fills, <laughs> and it almost fills that like Rick Moranis just a little, slot. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. 
when he like shows up and he's like, guys, I'm here. I'm a it's Ghostbuster. Like, I'm a Ghostbuster. Like, it's, I don't think there's a battery in my proton pack. Like, yeah, you don't. Get no, one. no, no, no. Yeah, you don't get one. No, it just makes the, it, just, it just makes the sounds. Yeah. You just get to, you know, you get to. You oh, there are batteries. It's just two double A's. <laughs> just enough for the speaker. <laughs> yeah, I think that works. Yeah, and that's fun. Yes, because it's like because that is he's showing up and doing his best and doing a terrible job, but he's really trying. Yeah, that to me is more the person and the character is doing funny things mm-hmm. rather than you have written funny jokes. Sure. Mm-hmm. And you're letting funny people just riff. Yes. Yeah. Which, uh, don't get me wrong, I love that. I know that you do. Because that's but you, you gotta, also the flavor of who I, I am as a person. Yeah, I know, you just gotta kind of put little fences on it about. No, I know. But That's the thing. There were no fences I, in this I, movie. I, I am a bit, I, you know me, I like to improvise. I know that you do. I also, if you want to get a terrible performance out of me. Give you a script. <laughs> First of all, how dare you? Second of all, I mean, not completely wrong, but if you want to get a terrible performance out of me, yeah. don't give me any, don't give me any guide rails. Oh. They're like, oh, just do what you feel is right. I'm like, no. Oh, no. No. You need to like, give me what beats you need. Give me what moments you need. Yeah. Please like, put me in a box. It's not even that. Like, I, I need a pen, not a box. Like I need room to. I need. Pen's just a really big box. I'm a free. I can be a free range chicken, but there's still you know something keeping the coyotes out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I want to see this movie now. I know because the thing is because they could pull this off. They could pull this off. They could pull it off. Good. Yes, it would. I really like the idea of like like uh, just like Melissa McCarthy and and uh, and Dan Aykroyd just like going back and like bipping back and yes, and they have like. I think it's like they have like a they're very they have a good working relationship, but they're they're just so mean to each other. <laughs> sure, that's you know great. I mean? Yeah, like and I feel like it's part of the dynamic. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's yeah. Yeah, that's there's yeah. There's a lot that could this could really work. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. All right. But I mean, Frozen Empire comes out very soon, and I'm I'm so excited. About yeah, it's gonna, I think I it's going to be great. Wait. I can't, I can't, I can't wait. wait to see it. I mean, we're uh, going to wait to see it, but I can't wait to see it. All right, I think we got this into a good spot. I, mean, I like, think we did, yeah, because then it's just sequel bait after that. Yeah, it just makes me sad sometimes when we fix stuff and it's like the ship has, it's not just sailed; it's completely sunk. Like there's no, there's not even a possibility of it because no. I'm like, oh, there's this no could, way. we no. could, but I just okay, never mind. We got Paul Rudd now. We got Paul Rudd now. Yeah, I mean. He's the right guy for the job. Oh my God! Yes. Yeah. It's just like because yeah, you know, because you know he's our he's our generation's Bill Murray. Oh. Have you noticed that? No. Yeah. But that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. He's just like the guy. It's like, I mean, I think Bill Murray has gotten a little bit more mean spirited as he's gotten older. But like, a little bit. He was always a little snarky. He but was it's, a little, yeah. But it's also the snark is getting sharper. That was yeah. It's yeah. But also, I think that's just kind of certain aspects of comedy not really aging well always because like chevy chase was like that was his whole thing like kind of being a dick and it was like we don't like that anymore please stop. <laughs> please stop please that's not funny <laughs> nope <laughs> could, could you fall again please yeah, about that? i like it when people are nice to each other <laughs> <laughs> like, please and thank you it's like if you're going to if you're going to be snarky at least it should be someone you know and come from a loving place <laughs> should be a, like that's the thing would be like oh jay's like really taking it to animals like yes because i love him <laughs> if i did didn't like him i wouldn't say anything <sighs> anyways anyways i think we did a very good job of fixing this movie this feels good i'm 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 like i'm i'm happy about it but yeah i'm also sad that we didn't get to see that movie yeah because that would have been awesome what are we what are we fixing next week pal next week well next week is a interesting week because godzilla comes out next week oh or i'm sorry godzilla godzilla x kong kong um, so, I mean, we can't really fix a Godzilla film because we did one earlier. Uh, we did the we did the the nineties one with uh, um, Ferris Bueller. So we're gonna fix another monster movie. Oh, Rampage! That's right, Rampage! Awesome, 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 awesome! I Which is not a it's not that bad. It's a fun flick. It's a fun flick. It's a fun flick. I stand behind it. Oh, that, that, that'll be fun. That will be fun. And also, we get to see what see that movie again. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today, you guys. Thanks yeah. for. Thanks for. I think we fixed it. I think we did a great we, job. I think we did a great job. Uh, but you know, in record time, and we yeah, we really well, you know, we, we needed to. We had a lot of other content to make. <laughs> There's we got, so much stuff going look, on. You guys wanted Shogun, so this is how this goes this week. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Uh, <laughs> pay the iron price. <laughs> Uh, but you know what to do with podcasts. If you listen to this wherever you catch a uh, podcast in the ear space or the listen of the listen half, uh, if you wouldn't mind leaving us a quick review, maybe leaving us five stars. It really helps with the algorithm. It helps uh, bump us up on Spotify and on Apple Music or wherever you find your podcast. Also, if you're catching this on YouTube, hi, YouTube. How's this going? You know what to do. Hi. Like, subscribe, hit that bell. Do that YouTube that you do so well guacamole's extra you 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 podcast watching weirdos you i've never understood why podcasts need to have a video element but it's very important to the industry now it is now so here we are i like it in my, i like it in my ears earbudsies um but uh as we end every single one of these episodes heartbreak feels good in a place like this uh it's the slow crossing of the streams you don't see coming We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.